איה קורם שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank you very much. איה, you are a well-known singer, musician, performer. You write your own music, and your albums have been doing very well. And recently we have learned that in addition to all these wonderful characteristics and talents, you can also train horses. How come? Uh, training the horses or taming the stallions or whatever you want to translate the Even better. name. Even better. Uh, uh, is the name of my latest album. It's an independent album that I uh, recently released. And what else? That's it. Aya, when one listens to your wonderful music, it's quite apparent that it is both melodic and contains some very deep messages, sometimes even rebellious, which means that you probably consider the role of a musician uh, as a very important one when it comes to the society. Oh yes, oh yes. Um, most of my songs um, are started with uh, lyrics, with the text. Uh, the singers and songwriters I admire most are the great poets, Leonard Cohen, Tom Waits, Johnny Mitchell. They all write songs um, that you can also read, not only listen to. Uh, and uh, if I inspire, if I aspire to be like someone, it's like these guys. And uh, I think, yes, I think um, musicians can play a very important role in society. And I think uh, your lyrics are the best way to do it. Aya, uh, we are sitting here in a, a cafe in Tel Aviv. This is why the back noises, and it's also Purim. Mm -hmm. And I know that any artist, especially a performer, when he goes or when she goes on stage, she puts on a mask, sometimes more than one. So this is a very appropriate day to have this interview with you. Let's talk about your influences. You have mentioned a few, mm -hmm. but I am interested in more. Okay, uh, actually, uh, because of Purim, I uh, decided to um, prepare a special show, a special concert. I had the premiere last night, and uh, it's Purim, so I just did a tribute to my favorite female singer-songwriters uh, of all times. Who is? Uh, who are Tori Amos, Johnny Mitchell, ah. uh, a few Israeli ones, of course, uh, Tirza Atar, Lea Goldberg, uh, Rona Kainan, and Susan Vega. And uh, last night I sang all, the, all of my favorite, favorite songs by my favorite, favorite ladies, and it was a wonderful night. I apologize for missing it. It, 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 really, will happen again. it really sounds wonderful. <laughs> Aya, I know that in addition for caring about what's happening in Israel, mm -hmm. your uh, interest is much beyond it. For example, let's talk about my favorite enemy. Okay. Uh, we happen to have it here. Yeah. This is the CD of my favorite enemy. And I know that you are very proud of it. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, my favorite enemy is a special, special project uh, that uh, was started in 2009. It involves musicians from Israel, uh, the Palestinian Authority, from Jordan and from Norway, and we have one American musician as well. And um, it, they're all singers and songwriters, very famous ones uh, in their countries. And the project was supposed to bring us together to write songs, to write music together, and uh, we did it. And we made an album. This is our album. They're all songs made by all these wonderful guys. 
It's in Hebrew, it's in Arabic, it's in English. It's um, just a mixture of all our influences together. What are the prospects of this album going on tour? all over the world? Uh, going on tour is just um, something we began working on these last uh, two years. Hopefully it will take us to wonderful new places like the ones we've been to already. And uh, yeah, I hope as many people as possible would, will be able to listen to this music and be inspired as much as we are. And it's indeed a wonderful album, if I may say so myself. And I know that uh, soon, very soon actually, you will depart, leave us behind, and go on a U.S. tour. Yes. What uh, is the uh, plan there? Um, this uh, U.S. tour, which I'm embarking on this coming Sunday, uh, is a tour uh, with um, concerts all over the States with my own shows, uh, my favorite enemy uh, shows, uh, in front of Jewish communities and Israeli communities and basically everyone who is interested in hearing new music and uh, yeah, I'm psyched about it. Yeah, in cases like this I regret that I'm not an American. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I know that when a musician, especially one who writes his own uh, music, mm -hmm. every album is considered to be like a child. Oh, yes. Do you have a favorite or it's unfair to us? I think uh, the last one is always the favorite. You can ask me this question, uh, this, this question after the fourth one and I'll answer the last. And after the fifth one, I'll answer the last. Uh, if you're um, uh, very decisive on doing whatever you love best and, and, and makes you feel emotional about it, it's probably your best thing so far. So we should have, we should hope that you will have a huge family when it comes to children. Yes. yes. And we will gain from it and we will of course uh, cherish all of them. I wanted to ask you about how is it for a successful musician as yourself coming from the periphery, the Israeli periphery. I, I know that you were born and raised in uh, Natsrat Ilit, which is, uh, which is up, thank you, which is up north. Mm -hmm. uh, how difficult do you think it was for you compared, for example, for somebody who was born and raised in one of the biggest cities, for example, Tel Aviv? I think uh, for a musician it's important to have a circle of musicians, of other musicians, people who are uh, dedicated to the same thing. And you don't have it if you grow up in a distant place. So you have to find your own um, way of getting that. Uh, other people who grew up in Tel Aviv, let's say, could go to a music high school or, or uh, go to, I don't know, a lot of people went to, um, uh, they have in the army those, uh, how do you call it in English? Those army bands. Uh, people go to the army and make music in the army, but yeah. that wasn't something my family would feel good about. They wanted me to go to the army and do something uh, important. And if so, I'm not wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. feel free, you were, you were training Israeli tank soldiers? Yes, yes, yes. That As was part my of job. your military that service? Was my job. I can drive and shoot a tank. Uh, it's a wonderful party story. Um, Very musical. Yes. Um, <laughs> so a lot of people go to these places to meet people and to play with people. And uh, I had to go to music college. That's what I did. I went to Rimon. Rimon. Music college. and. That was the best thing someone who lives in a distant place can do for his career. Aya, when it comes to your favorite instrument, mm -hmm. what would it be? Piano or guitar? I would say piano. That's what I. Uh, that's what I always loved growing up. Are the roots are classical piano? 
playing? Not really, because I'm a very bad student. Uh, I uh, have a wonderful dad uh, who encouraged me all of my teenage years and uh, my childhood years, of course, to be a good piano student and to study and to practice, but no way. Um, I don't have the patience. So I would say pop and rock musicians were always my biggest inspiration. We spoke about the past, mm -hmm. we spoke about the present, mm -hmm. and also touched a bit about the future when it comes to your American tour. Mm -hmm. But when you look ahead, let's say one year from now, five years from now, where do you see yourself? What would you like to do, maybe that you haven't done until now? Actually, the thing I want more than anything is just keeping making albums that I love and keeping just making music. And if I can make that happen, I will be, I'll be happy. I know that music is a cosmopolitan language. Mm -hmm. And listening to my favorite enemy, for example, where you sing in English as well, you sound like an international uh, musician. What makes you an Israeli musician? Um, I think it's uh, my love of the language. That's it. I love Hebrew. I, I adore it. I uh, think uh, writing in Hebrew for me is the most challenging and most interesting thing that I can do. Writing in, in English is a lot easier and it's, it's fun, but it's, not, it's nothing like Hebrew. So now we are talking about the lyrics, yes, but when it comes to the music, what makes your music mm -hmm. Israeli, if at all? Uh, I have to say that uh, counting the number of influences one can uh, have growing up in Israel is, is, is endless. Uh, it's impossible uh, because you're growing up uh, my family came from Russia and Poland, but I grew up and I listened to every possible kind of music in the world. We have people from Yemen and from Morocco and people from um, uh, the States and Europe and, and Africa and Asia and whatever. So One of your <laughs> colleagues, forgive me for interrupting, Rita, mm -hmm. just came out with Farsi, yeah. a, a Farsi mm -hmm, album. Mm -hmm. So you hear everything. Uh, you can choose, if you like something, you can choose to learn more and learn more about it. But, uh, I guess the combination of all of it is Israeli. Aya, I would like to thank you very much for taking the time. I know that you are extremely busy. You are probably one of the most hard-working musicians in Israel. And I want to wish you a wonderful tour and all the success in the future. And please keep uh, spoiling us with your wonderful music and as many albums as possible. Toda <laughs> raba.